Today on the weekly update with Boost Mobile, the next level in sports, we're in the epicenter of competitive surfing as Hawaii's North Shore lights up with the XL Pro and the Vans Triple Crown. Plus, Tony Hawk gets stoked, Garrett Reynolds throws a Thanksgiving feast, and we go one-on-one -on -one with pro surfer B. Durbage. We've got all that and much, much more right here, right now. From the mountains to the streets, lakes to the beaches, Fuel TV's weekly update with Boost Mobile gives you all the news in the action sports world. Hi again, I'm Brent Ringenbaugh and welcome to Hawaii's famed North Shore, where all the best surfers are in town for the winter big wave season. We're on the beach where they run the first jewel of the Vans Triple Crown, the Reef Hawaiian Pro. But the winter season actually gets going with the XL Pro at Sunset Beach. Here's XL founder Ed Descoli with more on the event. It feels great to be able to do this for 25 years in a row. You know, seeing some of the kids growing up from going into the amateur contest, getting into the XL Pro, surfing the, the waves that they dream about when they're little kids against guys that they look up to because we have such a, a wide age category of guys here. The waves are firing into the semis where big bombs and big barrels are the name of the game. Back-to-back semifinal heats will weed the pack down to the final four. And those jerseys will go to Makuakai Rothman, Kamale Alexander, and surviving all the way through from round one, it's Danny Fuller. Last but not least, rounding out the all-Hawaiian final is three-time XL winner, Poncho Sullivan. Not long after paddling out, Sullivan will set the pace with a blistering 9.77 on this great tube ride, putting him firmly in the driver's seat. Fuller will answer back, drawing a line worth seven points and change, but it's Alexander who will chase after Sullivan the hardest, but he's not alone in his bid for the top. Right behind Alexander, it's Rothman. He'll score an 8.5 on this one. But Sullivan isn't backing off at all. He'll get covered up once again on this wave, scoring a ride worth 8.67. With Sullivan in the lead, a brief lull works to his advantage. But just before the final buzzer, a set comes through, Poncho will submit yet another strong ride. Then Alexander drops in. He needs a 9.45 to steal the win from Poncho. Will this double barrel be enough? The judges give it an 8.7, and it's Sullivan holding on for the win. It was just an amazing final, and those guys were surfing really good. I mean, I, I think uh, the, the level of performance is, was, you know, as high as any WCT event I've ever been in. So it was, uh, it was a very gratifying win. Again, that's Poncho Sullivan winning the XL Pro presented by Honolulu. Kamale Alexander takes second, and Danny Fuller comes in third. The 35-year-old Sullivan announced his retirement from the 2008 ASP World Tour at the end of the season. Well, around these parts, many surfers will tell you that winning an ASP World title is good, but there's one title that will take you to legend status overnight. That's by winning the Vans Triple Crown. It's three contests held at three of Hawaii's finest breaks, and it's called the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. The event executive director has more. Aloha and welcome to the final day of the Reef Hawaiian Pro. We're here at Hollywood's Ali'i Beach Park. Adverse conditions, rain, wind, and we're hoping as the day wears on, the conditions turn around and improve. If that's the case, we'll finish up a great first stop of the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. Let's waste no time getting into the best heat of the contest. Tahitian Michelle Berez lights up semifinal one with a long barrel to score 9.3. Then Kakoa Bacalso will answer with a tube ride of his own and end it with a critical floater to rack up 8.33. The barrel show continues with Nick Muscroft covered up not once but twice. Bacalso's back and he'll score a wave worth nine and change. That'll get him a spot in the final. He'll be joined by Berez, who secures his jersey with a couple of huge turns. Oh, waves are pumping in that heat. That was probably the one of the best Haliva I've ever surfed. And uh, 943 and the 833, you know, wasn't even safe, you know. Waves are so good, there's tens everywhere, so um, I'm just stuck to make the final. Then suddenly the ocean falls flat and semi two is the slowest heat of the day. Brazil's Jihad Kadur will win it with a 4.83. And Maui's Dusty Payne just needs one point to advance into the final, and he gets it. Oh, I seen the time clock just ticking down, and I was like, oh my goodness. I, I only needed one, so I just scratched it inside. Caught a wave this big. <laughs> it's 
pure luck. In the final, Kodur keeps the ball rolling, coming out of the gate with a huge snap off the top. Meanwhile, Berez is back in the barrel and piling on the points. Bacalso unleashes a huge snap on the inside, but things aren't going so well for Payne. He's pinched again. As the clock winds down, Berez pulls into the best barrel of the heat, putting him over the top. But it's Kodur striking back hard, going fins free on these back-to-back -back turns. Will it be enough? No, it won't. Perez holds on for the win, and he'll dedicate the victory to fellow Tahitian Malik Joyu, who died surfing Pipeline in 2005. Just to win this, this comp is really special for me, especially here in Hawaii, and it's pretty close for me at home, and it's like all the family is here. That's great. I'm so stoked. Again, that's Michelle Perez winning the Reef Hawaiian Pro. Jihad Kudur takes second, and Kakoa Bacalso comes in third. On the women's side, 44 surfers took advantage of solid overhead waves on the opening day of the Reef Hawaiian Pro. And it was the teenage new wave of women's professional surfing that would steal the show early on as Hawaiians Carissa Moore and Coco Ho set the pace toward a final berth. Then more big news breaks in quarterfinal one as Australia's Claire Bevilacqua comes out on top, beating defending world champ Stephanie Gilmore along the way. Definitely really, really stoked to take out Stephanie Gilmore. She's beaten me so many times and, and um, yeah, I'm just happy. But Bevilacqua's run will hit the wall in the semis as yet another teen wonder makes her presence felt. It's Australia's Laura and Never advancing to the final, joining Moore and Ho. The three teen wonders will be joined by 36-year-old and seven-time world champ Lane Beachley in a cutthroat final, and not without some controversy. As the 30-minute heat approaches the final buzzer, the 16-year-old Moore is sitting in the lead. But Beachley just needs a highly attainable ride in the six-point range to snatch the victory from the young Hawaiian. Beachley finds her wave, but that's Coco Ho dropping in on her, and with the air, Ho shuts down Beachley's scoring potential. And that leaves the top of the podium wide open for more to become the youngest Triple Crown event champ. It's a pretty amazing feeling to, to win this first event at Haliva. And um, I had a lot of fun in the final with all the girls. And it's definitely an honor to, to win over here. It was like being in school. Uh, I felt like the school teacher. And I had my, my three students paddling around me and snaking me and dropping in on me and not respecting their elders, but, but it was fun. I enjoyed being out there and, and watching what these young girls are doing. Well, it's been a great week and a half here at Hollywood's Elite Beach Park as we wrapped up the women's division of the Reef Hawaiian Pro, youth over the veterans, and we'll see if that will prevail as we move on up to Sunset Beach for the next stop of the band, Triple Crown, the Roxy Pro at Sunset Beach. Again, that's Carissa Moore winning the Reef Hawaiian Pro. Lane Beachley takes second, and third place goes to Laura and Never. Coming up later, it's a birthday blowout at the block. But next, Kelly Slater wins one in the fight against skin cancer. Welcome back to the weekly update with Boost Mobile, the next level in sports, and welcome back to the North Shore, where the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing is in full swing. Before we get back in the water, let's head to the mainland for a glimpse at the future of professional skateboarding at a contest called the Active Am. We're in the Inland Empire of Southern California for the 2008 Active Am. The folks here at Active handpicked 40 top AMs from all over the world. They've got guys like David Lloyd, just won Damn Am a couple weeks ago, and Andrew Lange. He's won a few contests already this year. These guys are going to be competing for cash, glory, and I heard the winner even gets a kiss from Active Erica. Active Am has a reputation for bringing in guys like Chris Fanner and Peter Raffin and, you know, guys that you don't normally see in contests. So I think that they like the fact that it's only the top guys and it's an honor kind of to skate in it. With a pack of 40 weeded down to a six-man final, the 20-minute heat was packed with the caliber of skateboarding you'd expect from the next generation of up-and-coming talent. It didn't hurt either that there was six grand on the line for first place. That kind of cash can make a young man shine or slam. The extension was certainly one of the favorite obstacles, and Daryl Angel will use it to his advantage all the way to third place. Just came out, skated, had fun. I mean, it didn't really like, the course is pretty sick. That's kind of what helped with like, the kind of stuff that I'm like, that I like to skate and stuff. 
jamming for the top spot and all that cash, Andrew Lange will add yet another standout appearance to his 2008 contest resume. After flipping the hip, he'll stick the blunt. But there's somebody between Lange and the top of the podium, and his name is Brandon Westgate. He's got the front side flip to wall ride, not to mention a 50-50 up the big ledge. And when the dust settles, it's Westgate out in front. You don't even seem hyped, you just won six Gs. Uh, yeah, no, I'm stoked. Uh, cameras make me nervous. In the best trick event, Marius Savenin would win with a backside nose blunt slide on the extension. Active and Girl Skateboard Companies are putting on the Mike Mo Capaldi Pizza and Pancakes video contest. You can go to ActiveRideShop.com for the details. Now let's get back in the water and this event aims to raise the awareness in the fight against skin cancer. Cocoa Beach, Florida is the backdrop for the third annual Sean and Skippy Slater Invitational, a contest put on by the brothers to benefit the Skin Cancer Foundation. Drawing out the crowds for a good cause, the most famous Slater brother, Kelly, was on hand. Obviously an important thing, get people together and educate them about skin cancer, that's what this is for. Um, my best buddy here at home uh, started the foundation. My brothers put together the event, so it's pretty cool, just come home and, uh, you know, I don't surf events in Florida very often, so this is about the only one. Longboarder Josh Autry was also in the mix. It's just uh, like the Slater Brothers Invitational, and um, it's just uh, invite only. So uh, it's a real honor to surf in the contest, and uh, there's some really good guys here. Before the main event, Autry would go to work in the longboard division, walking his way to the top of the podium. Then the crowd got a taste of the Florida talent. C.J. Hobgood would work a decent left, but in the end, he wouldn't make the cut for a spot in the three-man final. Kyle Garson would draw first blood in the last heat of the contest, He'll be joined by Kelly Slater, and rounding out the lineup is Blake Jones. Only their two best waves will count toward their final score, and Slater will get this keeper as the 30-minute heat gets going. But it's Garson pulling into the lead as the clock winds down. Slater has just a half a minute left to try and come back for the win, and he'll get the wave he needs. It's the nine-time world champ's first-ever victory at the Family Invitational. You can learn more at WorldSkinCancerFoundation.com. Another member of the Action Sports Elite is also making waves, and the skate legend was recently awarded for keeping the stoke alive. The Red Bull space in the heart of New York's Soho District hosted the benefit. It raised money for the nonprofit Stoked Mentoring Program, which takes at-risk youth and turns them on to action sports culture. Stoked co-founder Steve LaRosselier has more. We developed a curriculum where kids learn more about life and through themselves and learn how to set goals. They learn about values, they learn how to overcome obstacles, and they learn how to communicate better. When it was time for the hardware, Peter Paris was awarded the Volunteer of the Year. It's really been an amazing experience for me. I've seen these kids that you know, were so shy beforehand, now that they now know that when they, they want to be heard, they got to stand up and speak up, so it's been great. And the big prize went to skate legend Tony Hawk, who took home the Stoked Achievement Award. I think that uh, you know our, our foundation is in line with, with the goals of Stoked, and, and that is helping kids in low-income areas, at-risk youth, helping them to believe in themselves. You know, it's not about creating future pros in our sports. It's about teaching them the valuable lessons that you can learn through our sports. The Wilson Skate Park in Compton, California is the latest feather in Tony Hawk's cap. The 11,000 square foot park opens later this month. Up later, it's Garrett Reynolds giving thanks for Banks. But next, we go one-on-one -on -one with pro surfer B. Durbage. Welcome back to the weekly update with Boost Mobile, the next level in sports, and welcome back to Hawaii's North Shore as the winter season delivers the best competitive surfing on the planet. In between events, we caught up with the reigning Triple Crown champion, Bede Dervidge. In this week's one-on-one, -on -one, Bede talks about one of the best days of his life, competing against Kelly Slater and life on the world tour. Everyone's always called me the dark horse, and uh, I kind of like it because I can go under the radar and not get all the media hype that all the other guys get. It. People don't really know what to expect from me, so it's kind of good for me. I can still yeah, just go about my way and yeah, it's, it's going really well for me.
Last year I was, I was struggling with uh, no, no support, no sponsors. It was really tough, but it just motivated me a lot and sucked my guns and, and um, kept training hard and got rewarded and now I've got plenty of good supporters. Yeah, it just it makes you feel a lot more confident and yeah, it's good to be rewarded. My first year I found it so hard on tour. Um, I guess it's like doing an apprenticeship, I kind of see it as, and I uh, finished 29th first year, and then uh, next year I finish 15th, then 5th, and now I'm 2nd, so I don't know, you just got to learn from your mistakes and work on your weaknesses, and I'm only 25, so my surfing's progressing every year, so yeah, I'm, I'm just getting stronger and stronger each year. To win the Triple Crown last year was uh, pretty much a dream come true and coming into Hawaii I was pretty amped on doing well and had a good contest at Halle Eva and then backed it up at Sunset and then had the dream run at Pipe and uh, secured it and it was just a dream come true. <music> Kelly and I have had a few heats again this year and pretty much my whole career all my major heats have been against Kelly and uh, it was great to just have those heats and I learned a lot off him and uh, I think he's maybe 6'5", beat me so it's always, you just take so much out of every heat you surf against him and he's uh, such an inspiration to me. It's all just um, stepping stones for me and uh, just moving forward and to win the world title is every surfer's dream and obviously mine and it's been a dream since I was a kid and I know it's going to be a lot of hard work and I'm going to have to make a lot of sacrifices but uh, yeah I'm just going to give it my best shot and, and uh, hopefully my dream will come true. Bede is currently ranked second on the ASP World Tour. We'll see if he can hold that ranking after the final event of the season, the Billabong Pipeline Masters. Up later, it's 10 years of hardcore skateboarding at the block. But next, there's no bird, but there's plenty of bikes. It's Thanksgiving in New Jersey. Welcome back to the weekly update with Boost Mobile, the next level in sports, and welcome back to Hawaii. As you've seen in the show, this is the time of year for great waves on the North Shore, but it's also the time of year to give thanks, BMX style. Thanks, Brent. Hanging out in Lakewood, New Jersey, the Incline Club Skate Park for Nike 6.0's Thanksgiving. Initially, it was scheduled to be in Garrett Reynolds' backyard, but Mother Nature had other plans. She rained it out. Thankfully, the skate park's right around the corner. Nike packed it all up, brought all the free goodies here. There's a ton of people here, lots of big name pros, lots of F-U-N going down. Weather in New Jersey is not always too agreeable with what you want to do, so uh, decided to rain all over us today, so... Uh, we couldn't ride my ramps because they're all saturated. You just, you just slide out and it wouldn't work. But uh, we came to Lakewood Skate Park and it's still pretty sick. Thanksgiving originated last year. It's kind of a playoff Thanksgiving, but it's more of just kind of like, hey, this is a cool BMX kind of holiday. So it's time for everyone to get together. It's not a contest. It's just a bunch of guys hanging out, like free pizza for the kids. Like kids can be sitting on the deck right next to the top pros they see on TV. So it's just, just a fun day for everyone to come out and just, just have a good time. This park's nuts, man. Uh, Scotty designs and he's the best park rider there is. And, and I, I don't know, I like it. A lot of the dudes like it, but yeah, it's definitely pretty gnarly. I uh, really like Thanksgiving is just Nike's way of getting back to their riders, you know? And it's just a way to uh, cut loose, you know? Like, come have fun, ride BMX for the right reasons. And they got a bunch of free product to give away. And when it's done, like, the whole point is to smile and everyone lives with one, so it does a job. And coming up next week, we'll bring you Dennis Anderson's version of Thanksgiving. Well, as you know, Vans is big in surfing, but Steve Van Doren's famous waffle print first laid tracks in the world of skateboarding. And 10 years ago, the shoe giant opened up its first skate park. Fuel TV correspondent and Vans rider Neil Hendricks has more. We're at a place that's pretty special to me. The Vans Skate Park in Orange County, California is celebrating its 10 year anniversary today. And over the last few years, I've seen a ton of skateboarding's new generation learn how to skate and come up through the ranks here. It's also hosted a ton of skateboarding events, including the annual ProTech Pool Party. Let's catch up with a guy who started it all, Steve Van Doren. 
Vance has been around for 42 years, getting real close to 43 years and stuff. And one of the greatest things we ever did was build this skate park and the one in Orlando. And just we're proud to say it's 10 years old. Come check it out. It got remodeled about maybe three months ago. The whole street course, the vert ramp turned into a mini ramp, and of course the famous combi pool. But this is definitely a testimony to skateboarding never dies. Ten years here at the Vans Block Skate Park in Orange County. Think about that. It's sick. Was this park a huge part of your skateboarding growing up? Oh, most definitely. I mean, there's nowhere else really good to skate like around besides like Encinitas all the way out here. It's the only spot down here, so I was here every day just somewhere to skate, something good. In 10 years, I tripped out when I pulled up and said in the 10 year I saw it and I was like, man, I was here 10 years ago on the same day. I'm here again. <laughs> well, on behalf of myself and all the other locals, this has been my home away from home for a few years. So I want to thank Vans for building this place. And, uh, and I know all the other local skaters say the same thing. Right on. See everybody out there. Thanks a lot for coming by. Vans Skate Park 10 year anniversary at the Block in Orange. The Van Skate Park at the Block at Orange will host the fifth installment of the ProTech Pool Party this spring. And speaking of Vans, coming up next week, we'll have the highlights as the Vans Triple Crown hits stop number two, the O'Neill World Cup of Surfing. Until then, I'm Brent Ringenbaugh. Thanks for checking out the weekly update with Boost Mobile. That's it from Holly Eva, but before we go, here's more action from the North Shore. Enjoy, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>